Well, hello, friends. Welcome back to Commute Talk. Today, Hans writes in asking about web browsers. Um, am I going to port a browser to Serenity or maybe write my own? Um, and if I do write my own, then how is it going to be different than Chrome or Firefox, other browsers, right? So thank you, Hans, for these questions. It's, uh, good questions. They come up very, very often. Um, especially when people find out that I worked on uh, WebKit and Safari for many years, then they always want to ask, like, so are you going to do a new browser? Um, <clears throat> so I guess the short answer is I don't know. Uh, I find it extremely hard to find motivation to work on browser stuff right now. Uh, I have a small uh, HTML rendering library that I've been trying to build in Serenity, but I just, whenever I try to work on it, I just lose motivation in the first hour or so. So it never really gets off the ground. <clears throat> but I, I keep coming back to it every couple of weeks and just seeing if it feels fun. And so far it just doesn't. But I think that's a, that's a temporary thing. Like I just have to um, get out of that feeling and it'll come back to me someday. We'll see. <clears throat> Um, so unless somebody wants to help out on that, or uh, uh, or if I have a change of uh, heart, I guess, then it's far more likely that we'll see a port first. <coughs> so um, a week ago or so, I talked about NetSurf being a potential port, and then um, one of the NetSurf developers showed up in the comments and uh, expressed some interest in maybe working on a port, so that was, that was cool. Um, I haven't really heard anything more about that since, but we'll see. Um, that might be, a, might be very interesting. But so, uh, about the second part of your question there, like if I did a um, new browser, <coughs> what would I do differently than existing browsers? Um, so that's, that's really interesting, but uh, I haven't really thought about that. So bear with me while I figure out what I would do. I guess this would be my chance to, um, to do all the things the way that I always thought they should be done, right? So I guess it would be very um, light on the resources. Um, like uh, the first thing I, I wouldn't do is I wouldn't do a JavaScript JIT, for instance, because the, um, the amount of complexity and resource usage introduced by jitting JavaScript in modern browsers is just crazy. It's, uh, it's extremely heavy. And if you want to uh, even come close to participating in the uh, perpetual tail measuring contest, then um, you're going to need a lot of stuff, and I think I, it doesn't really fit with my uh, sensibilities anyway. So I wouldn't do a JIT. I would do an interpreter, and it wouldn't be fast. It would be, you know, it would be a, the best interpreter that I could build, but <clears throat> I wouldn't go beyond that, and that would allow us to save so much complexity, but also so much resources, because we wouldn't need to do any profiling or um, data flow analysis, or um, uh, we wouldn't need executable pages. Um, we would we wouldn't need all of these really um, big things that a modern jitting uh, JavaScript compiler needs. So I would just not do that, and I would just say this does not have fast JavaScript. Uh, and then if you wanted to use it, you could, because I always wanted to use a browser like that, but everyone insisted on <laughs> building it differently. So I just went along with it. Uh, and then another thing is, I, so I think there are basically two, two types of browser developer. There are the, the people who think that the browser is a virtual machine in which you run web apps. And then there are the other people who think that the browser is a document reader 
in which you run smart documents. And I am very much in the smart document camp. And it is a small camp and it keeps shrinking uh, as more and more people switch over to the app mindset. But I am firmly stuck in the smart document camp. I don't like web apps. I like smart documents. And um, I think I would probably prioritize things very differently based on that. <clears throat> I mean, the interpreter thing is, is just one such thing, right? That I don't care if my smart document is a little slow. It doesn't have to run at 60 FPS on mobile um, or whatever. <laughs> uh, so I would make sure that, um, or not make sure, but I, I would, I would, um, I would not care if a document uh, wants to look a certain way. Like I wouldn't, I wouldn't go to great lengths to respect the way the document wants to look. Like if he says put a button here and then style it this way, I would just put a button and style it the way that the operating system prefers. Same thing with text input. <clears throat> like any kind of uh, form elements, I would just uh, make them look like uh, system form elements because that's just, um, that would be my preference, that they would just look, it would look more like a smart document running or, or being viewed on Serenity than Serenity like having a window that runs a web VM in it, if that makes sense. So it would be more, far, web pages would be forced to <laughs> behave in a system way rather than the system just uh, giving up a window where anything could happen. <clears throat> if that makes sense. And then another thing is I would be far less aggressive about uh, rendering optimizations. So that's something that ends up using a lot of resources in browsers is caching bitmaps, especially for stuff like CSS animations and um, like accelerated compositing stuff. Um, very often web pages are broken up into um, like a root layer which has the base page and then anything that's likely to animate or um, would in some way benefit from being on a layer of its own like if, if you would benefit because like if you're gonna move that layer by itself then um, it might be far more efficient to stick that on a separate GPU layer right and because of this, and because this is uh, in large part driven by heuristics, um, I would say that that's something that uh, ends up using a lot of resources. So I would probably just do less of that. I, and I would accept that maybe these things are not going to be fast, um, but they're also not going to use up all of your memory. Um, and. I might also be uh, aggressively skipping animations, for instance, um, or maybe like fast forwarding them a little bit, <clears throat> things like that. I don't know. Like uh, I wouldn't, I wouldn't let the, I wouldn't let the web page tell me what to do, you know, <laughs> if that makes sense. Um, so, yeah. And I think I think it's kind of interesting because you can people often, I, I often see people talking about like they want to have a light web browser and um, and they think that that um, in order to have a light web browser you have to skip out on features <clears throat> but that's not really true um, you could you could even take something like WebKit and spend some time stripping out a, a smaller set of key things that you could just carve out and then you would have a very light browser uh, because the majority of the resource drain comes from a small number of things and I mean those are big things but you could you could sever them um, it would be painful but you could do it so 
I wouldn't go into a new browser project thinking that like, oh, I'm going to do like a, a very featureless browser, but it will end up being um, very light. I would go into it thinking, I'm going to implement most of the, um, I mean, I'm going to implement the web platform as best as I can, um, but it won't have these conveniences that end up um, costing so much resources to implement. I guess that's, yeah, it would be light, but not in the way that people usually think about light. It would be light, uh, measurably light. <laughs> I guess that's, that's this kind of thing that, um, that often happens when people, um, when you try to figure out, you try to reason your way to what's causing a browser to be heavy instead of actually measuring it. But I can't do that because I <laughs> spent years and years and years measuring the browser every day. So I know what's heavy and I know what's light. And the web platform features are not particularly heavy. Um, it's, the, it's all of the JavaScript optimizations. Um, and um, that's, I mean, that's the major CPU heaviness. And then uh, all the bitmap caching is um, probably the, the memory part or at least the, the biggest of the memory parts. And yeah, you could just build a browser without that, a light browser. Uh, but it would be a big task. But one day I'm gonna wake up and I'm gonna be super motivated. And then you'll hear about browsers on Commute Talk instead. <laughs> but until that day, I'm gonna be doing an operating system, I think, so. Anyways, um, that's I guess that's my answer to that. So I hope that made sense. I uh, like I said, I didn't think about it before, so I had to figure it out um, live. Um, highway is a little confusing here. A lot of things going on. Okay. Uh, right, so <laughs> um, I don't have anything more to say. Right, I just have to wrap it up. Oh, of course. So I hope that you are having a great day and that your day in front of you will be even better. And <laughs> I don't know, I totally lost my track. Um, thanks for hanging out with me on the commute, and I'll see you next time. Bye. <laughs>